themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. That's the scene for this Sunday. That's the focus. And there are a good many ways to look at it. Jesus had been teaching his disciples. I mean, for the previous chapters throughout Luke, through parables and through instructions, he had been teaching his disciples how to live a faithful life. And then he turned, as we said in this gospel reading, then he turned to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. It's a difficult passage because the Pharisee, even though he's built up in a way to be the bad guy, was actually doing what he was supposed to be doing. He was being quite faithful in the practices of a Pharisee. He was, he was worshiping. He was giving. As a matter of fact, he was going beyond what was required. He was giving a tenth of all his income, not just what had been produced, but a 10% of everything he had. But there was something wrong with his heart. It was, it was hardened. And there wasn't much room for anybody else to be in it not others, so he rejected others, had to build up himself and be self-righteous and arrogant. And there probably wasn't much room for God either. But then there's the uh, tax collector. What he was doing was not good. And he was embarrassed about it. He was sorry about it. He said to God, forgive me, I am a sinner. What he was doing is that he was participating in the inequity of the economic powers, the economic system of that day, and taking advantage of those who had less and charging them too much. But his heart was soft, and he did realize what he was doing, and he did ask for, for forgiveness. He turned to God to come in. Now, these words, for all who exalt themselves and will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted, again, can be seen on different levels in this story about the tax collector and the Pharisee. Um, because on one level, it makes common sense. I mean, don't build yourself up because you might be cut down. I mean, that just makes common sense. On another level, it speaks to appropriate behavior. Nobody likes, nobody likes someone who goes around talking only about themselves and how great they are. So don't do it. Um, people do like people who are humble and open to listening to others. So do that. But, but this, this reading is not just about common sense behavior or acceptable behavior. It's even deeper than that. It's really about our relationship with God. It's really about prayer. And that's what I really want to lift up. So as we stand before God, it's not going to work if all we have in our minds and in our hearts is ourselves and our agenda. It's just not going to work because we're not going to hear God. On the other hand, if we are humble, something else is going to happen. Sometimes that God moment is a total gift. Um, it's spontaneous. We don't expect it. It just, boom, there it is. Um, I had an experience of that this past weekend, this past week, because our black lab, Hazel, gave birth to six puppies. I knew that would bring a response. <laughs> I can only use this story one time. But, but yes, that was my response. Um, the day after they were born, Joanne and I picked each one up and put it on the scale to weigh it and put a collar on it. But when we picked each puppy up, we just you know, held that puppy right up here. I held that puppy right up here next to my neck. 
course, uh, she thought it was, she might get some milk from that warm skin, which I could not produce. But, but she was just making a little bit of sound. And I don't know, I mean, I'm smiling right now. I mean, it was such a happy moment, such a gift. And I had nothing to do with it. It was not my agenda. I had nothing to do with it. It was Hazel and her mate and God's creation. But I was happy to receive it. And it, it was a sacred moment for me. Sometimes it's up to us to create that environment. We create that environment. We take the initiative. And intentionally, we create an environment in which we can feel God's presence, in which we can stand humbly before a loving God. And I want to say something about that. Because after all, like the Pharisee, we're all doing what we're supposed to do. We're coming to church on Sunday. I mean, that's a part of our faith journey, and here we are. Like the Pharisee, we're going to spend time in prayer. Like the tax collector, we want our hearts to be soft, open, and receptive to others and to God. So here's something I'd love for you to consider. St. Ignatius of Loyola it was um, a very important um, spiritual leader of the Christian church. He was the founder of the Jesuits, but more importantly than that probably was he had a lot of wisdom about the spiritual life and shared it in many, many ways. And one of the things that he encourages people to do is to say a specific sen sentence before you begin to pray, and especially if you're praying in a contemplative way, especially if you're praying in a reflective way, looking on what your actions have been for the past day, say. And this is what it is. This is what it is. I see and receive the love and joy with which God gazes at me as I gaze at God. Would you repeat after me, please? I see and receive the love and joy with which God gazes at me as I gaze The purpose of saying that is to create an environment. I, I mean, when I say it, and, and, and to say it over and over again until you really have created that environment, to really feel loved <coughs> and liked by God. And then to wait and see what happens. To create that environment to really stand humbly in God's presence and feel exalted because God loves us and to see what happens. Now the trick is, of course, how do we hang in there? How do we, are we faithful and persevere and walk that path to reach that place? And uh, with that, I want to move from the mystical to the mundane. And I want to talk about hiccups, but it, there is a connection, I promise you, there's a connection. So, you know, there's often, I mean, everybody's got their own way of stopping, of, of, of curing hiccups, but lots of times it doesn't work, I don't think. I mean, that drinking water upside down, that doesn't work, you know? <laughs> um, but I want to show you something that does work. So, so you know that little, I can't get to it because I'm wearing this crazy, clergy collar, but there's a little soft space right there in the middle of your throat, right there between these tendons. You know what I'm talking about? See if you can feel that. It's a very soft space. And what you do is you take a finger, maybe maybe your finger right here, and you, and you lightly touch, just lightly touch that soft, tender space. Because what happens when you have a hiccup, it depresses. It depresses. And so what you do is you just Touch it very lightly and wait for that next hiccup. And you stay very focused and wait for that skin to depress for the next hiccup. And sooner or later they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> That's a much
money back guarantee. Let me know how it works out for you. What I've, heard, what I've heard is that what happens in our bodies is that, is that by that anticipation, by that waiting, it changes the rhythm of our diaphragm, which changes, which, which stops the hiccups. It gets back to a regular working. Um, but I use that as a, as a fun example of what we're called to do in prayer with that sentence I was saying. I see and receive the love and joy with which God gazes at me as I gaze at God. It's important to say it and to wait until you really believe it. To wait till your agenda is gone and you are being humble in God's presence. And I promise you, you will smile. We are living in a dangerously critical time for our nation and for the world. And God wants us who believe in God to be agents of peace and love. And there are some common sense ways we could get to that, to think it out. How can I be more loving? You know? um, God also wants, uh, you know, some acceptable behaviors, which would be maybe more appropriate for peace in our nation and in our world. But as people of faith, the best way to get to that place, the best way to live in our mission to bring peace and love to the world is first of all to feel it ourselves, to feel it powerfully ourselves, humbly in God's presence. That's why I feel like this reading and this message is so important for us today in this age because God's access to God is as close as three hiccups away. <laughs> and when we know that God is with us, our lives are changed. And when that's happened, when that happens, we can change the world.